Now, if you're in uh, Kilrush tomorrow night and you've got an interest in genealogy, the Kilrush and District Historical Society are running an event uh, which uh, may tickle your fancy. It's entitled Tales from the Animals, Clear Surnames and Why DNA. Paddy Waldron is giving the talk. He's PRO of the Kilrush and District Historical Society. Good morning to you, Paddy. Good morning, Gavin. And thanks very much for joining us on the programme. Why DNA? Tell me more. A Y chromosome is the part of DNA that only men have, and they get it from their father, like in most cases people get their surname from their father. So it goes back through the centuries and the millennia. We've only had surnames for about a thousand years. They say it's a couple of hundred thousand years since the last man from whom every man alive today is descended in the male line. So there's been a lot of mutation of the Y chromosome over that period. There's also a lot of mutation of surnames and surname spellings and surname DNA switches. So I'll be talking about all that sort of stuff tomorrow evening. When you got into history, I doubt that you thought you'd be getting into DNA as well. Um, I probably didn't because I've been doing genealogy for over 40 years now, so it certainly wasn't being used (laughs) commercially back in the 70s when I started as a young child. But it is now, and, and how much of a tool is it for you when you're trying to do some research to, to what extent is genealogy being used to tell us about our or is uh, DNA excuse me being used to tell us about our geneal- genealogy and our past well there are people who say nowadays if you're into genealogy and your family history and you decide to ignore DNA it's like trying to research your family history and deciding you're going to ignore census returns And here in Ireland, we have our 1901 and 1911 census returns free online, and that's Mm. where everyone starts. So it's it's that big of a deal in in, in your eyes. And how do you you use it? I mean, when you're giving your your talk this evening, uh, and you'll you'll be going through this, I'm sure, but how literally do you use DNA? Uh, I presume it's in these tests that people purchase and, and submit their details into? Well, it's tomorrow evening. Not oh, tomorrow evening, evening excuse me, apologies. It's just up a day early. Um, there's two components to DNA that are used for genealogy. We've probably all seen the advertisements on television from the big companies like Ancestry and MyHeritage, which are looking at the autosomal DNA, where you get half from your father and half from your, so- your mother, and that will find you cousins on both sides of the family and cousins through all your grandparents and through all your great-grandparents. And I've talked about that before in yeah. Rush. But tomorrow I'll be talking about the Y DNA, which only men have, comes down from the father only, like the surname. And in theory, it will find you a long list of men who have the same surname as you, who have a common mm. male line ancestor within the surname era, which goes back for the last thousand years. Uh, but it will also find you men who still have a similar Y DNA signature to you, but the common ancestor might be before surnames, might be 1500, 2000 years ago. Or it might find that somewhere over the centuries, there's been a surname DNA switch. And I think the most exciting one I found from a Clare perspective is when I spoke to the OD gathering last May in Ennis, I was able to tell them there is a branch of ODs in Clare for really O'Brien's. And one, the man, Shane O'D, who's now the chieftain-elect of the O.D., said, well, I was always told growing up that the O.D.s and the O'Briens fostered each other's children down through the Middle Ages. And it turns out that somewhere about six or seven hundred years ago, an O'Brien child ended up being fostered by the O.D.s, took the O.D. surname and is the ancestor of maybe half of all the O.D.s in Clare, whereas the others are descended from somebody who had the O.D. surname several hundred years okay. before that. So even though they might think they're cousins based on their names, genetically, they're not related? Genetically, or? they're not as closely related as they thought. They're all Dalcassians. And there we call ourselves the Dalgash, the yeah. descendants of Kos, who lived in about the 4th century, according to the annals. And the annals tell us that there are probably dozens of Clare surnames that can be traced back to Kos. Similarly, up in the northwest, we have Nile of the Nine Hostages, and half the population of Donegal goes back to Nile of the Nine Hostages who lived roughly around the same time as Cost and maybe the fourth or fifth century. And I take it when you talked about that switch happening hundreds of years ago, six or seven hundred years ago, I think it was, that you said you'd obviously not be able to go back that far in most instances using um, traditional genealogy and, 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 and uh, going back through family trees, etc. This is opening up a, a different or maybe even a more effective way of, of looking through family histories? Absolutely, but in that particular case, we're very lucky because one of the first people to adopt YDN analysis when it became available almost 20 years ago was Conor O'Brien, Lord Inchiquin, 
who has a pedigree going back through about 32 generations to yes. Brian Beru, and lots of other O'Briens have joined in the O'Brien project. So there's a very good um, O'Brien Y-DNA signature that just happens to match the OD Y-DNA signature that some of the ODs have. So it helps, it helps to have a combination of the genetic evidence, the oral traditions, and the paper evidence, and the genealogist's sure. job is to try and reconcile all three. Very good. And is there more potential in this? I mean, the technology is relatively new, certainly in terms of it being commercially available anyway. It is changing dramatically even since I got involved, which is only about six years ago. Um, and there's huge potential to go further. There's great competition on the autosomal DNA, and now at Black Friday and so on, it only costs you 40 or $50 to get your autosomal DNA. The surname Y-DNA analysis is still somewhat more expensive. It costs over $100 to get started. And my hope is that eventually we'll have more competition in that market and the cost will come down, but the science is certainly advancing at a dramatic rate. Very good. And you don't have any concerns with regards to given away your DNA there's been and I'm not naming any company specifically here because it's not said about any one company or not but there's often questions being asked as to why are these tests so cheap what are we giving up in a world where we're, we're sensitive about our data some people are quite sensitive about this information well I'd probably go over to the supermarket now and swipe my loyalty cards and I'd probably give away a lot more data and a lot more valuable data about myself when I do that I'm getting nothing in return whereas I get to learn a lot about my family history by sharing my okay. DNA data. That's better than a few loyalty points. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're all trying to break into the anonymity of our ancestors who, who've disappeared beyond the genealogical brick wall and we shouldn't be afraid to give away a little bit of our own information in order to learn more. It's a trade-off. Okay. Learning more about your ancestors means you have to give up a little bit of information about yourself. So it's your talk, as you say, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, at uh, Chalk Hill and Grey Street in Curlwash. It's Tales in the Annals, Claire Surnames and the Y DNA. Um, the message from that talk will obviously be a, a, an explainer as to what's happened to date, but also to talk about the potential of it going forward, I presume, Paddy? Absolutely, yes. The more men we get involved in this project, the better. And if there's any woman out there who's interested, unfortunately, the women don't have the Y chromosome, but they can get their brothers or their fathers or their uncles or their cousins to get involved in the relevant surname studies as well. Very good. You'd love them to, to, to come along, everybody who's interested. Eight o'clock tomorrow night. Paddy, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks a million, Gavin. All the very best. Take care. Paddy Walton there of the Kilwash and District Historical Society.